just need to sit there. Okay, sit in our way. Just make sure those microphones are working because yesterday I wasn't sure if it was coming over the, the laptop or over the speaker. Recording in progress. That's just, that's not, it, it was just because it's not a normal occurrence, right? Normally we have pretty good connectivity, or is that something we got to we could probably, in the near future, address? Um, I don't know if they've had connectivity issues. Okay. We'll have to find out from the public accounts. Yeah. I mean, I mean if, it, if, it happened, happened. if it happened last night and it's a rarity, that's cool, but if yeah. it's like... If, it did happen we, last night. I know. But we don't want people who want to log on to get frustrated because they were in halfway through the meeting right. and stuff. Yeah, it's the first time that I know. That's what I think too. That's um, if it's a rarity, great. Um. <clears throat> All right. So the other thing I just want to add to the agenda tonight, because Mike the point was in here talking, mm -hmm. and he's got a real concern about seeing Jay because he's going to be registering. I'm just going to bring up right now. I to make it. I'm just bringing up the topic now, but we'll talk about it after we get through everything. But he has a real concern about us, about us not making a decision on just making a policy to accept the five buses. Mm -hmm. uh, he said they're going to be bringing in three new buses that they're going to register. It's another like 20 grand for the town. And, um, he encouraged me to call call Mr. Jalbert, but I don't really have any more information to give him, except for tonight after we do our regular business we talk and, and just make a decision to make a policy going forward and, and grant this town clerk seems pretty Seems okay with. Um, well, I think we were going to try to get some information on the um, the, component, the contract was it? Yeah. It was um, some sort of um, contract that they had for that. That's what we. I thought I Dan know. was looking into that. Yeah, I thought so too. But, all right. I mean, maybe we should bring Dan in for the interviews too, just to make sure we're on the same. I asked him if he could join the meeting, and he said he was able to. All right. Um, I can ask him again. I'm just from I just, I just don't want this to keep on okay. going by the wayside. Yep. I'm just wondering if you shouldn't you check with the municipal association about it and its legality. Possibly. He's got a couple of minutes. Right. Okay. Um, so I I would like us to also go back and talk about salaries at some point, but yep. salaries for okay. wage. You know, both the job descriptions and the sure. performance of it. If we're going to use them, I think we need to use them. Okay. Top of All right. Yeah, I just got a quick question. Yeah, sure. Mr. LaPointe was in here for CJ. Yep. He's, he's telling me, I guess, there's going to be two or three more new buses getting registered this week and more money coming to the town. Yep. Gotta, I'll use I'll use my own words, but a grave concern that we take care of this matter this week. Yep. About registering the five buses. Sure. So I know you gave us your two cents last night, but just want a little input because I'd like to try to make a decision on that tonight mm -hmm. if we can. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I talked to Mickey, who's a representative. Um, yep. You know, I deal with him quite a bit. Um, he was in, you know, asking about it. And um, I told him that you guys were going to talk about it. Um, and um, he said, really, the only like, 
they don't really have any like paperwork on the agreement. Um, he said that the best person to talk to would be Kathy Diamond at the DMV who knows the ins and outs of the program. I mean, I could give her, her name and number to you. She's a bureau, assistant bureau chief of registrations at the DMV. Um, you know, I have her email too. Um, so she, he said she'd be the one to talk to uh, about the program, um, but they don't have anything um, apparently in writing or, or anything like that. Um, so, and um, so that's kind of where we left it. Okay. What was the yeah. name of the person at DMV? Her name is Kathy Diamond, D-Y-M-E-N-T. I have her number in the office. I can get it, get it to you. And so she's familiar with the program? Yes. Yeah. Okay. She'd be the one to talk to. Um, so is that, do you see like that's a common thing across the state? What do you mean? In terms of the, um, the waiving of the state buses? Oh, I have no idea on that. I have no data whatsoever on that. All right. Okay. Yeah. If you could provide her number, I'd be great. Yeah, sure. Sure. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'll drop it off before I leave. Um, so do we want to start with, um, do you want to first, since you have to talk about salaries? Yeah, let me just start about the salaries for a minute. We, we mentioned yesterday in talking to the teams that uh, we wanted them to do job descriptions, we wanted them to do re performance reviews. If we're doing that, I think we need to utilize them. And what I'm saying is we, we approved, like, the highway of, we'll use Ed's group. We said we're going to probably put in a 5% across the board. I think we create that pool, give it to the head of the department and say, you split that up based on performance and seniority. So we're using those things to, to drive the, the way we do ratings. I think that's great. I think it's common. I mean, it's pretty common in, in business. That if you're going to do a performance review, you use it for something. That's certainly the way the last company I worked at. They had a pool, and based on your performance. Um, so you let him do that, and we'll do the head, head of departments. Right. So that's right. I'm just, the only question I'm raising is the fact that is there a pool where, you know, no matter what, someone's going to get a 1 or 2% raise, okay? And then the performers get a better percentage so as opposed to a 0% raise for one person and a 5% raise for another person. So cost of living in addition to merit? Yeah. Something thrown in that way. Because, you know, I, I, <clears throat> well, I think that the whole intent of this was to um, do market adjustments, um, which is different than what we had done in the past, which is just across the board cost of living type adjustments. Right. I'm in agreement with. I, I kind of like it. I'm also, I'm also, where I get a little concerned is possibly, poss possibility of favoritism mm -hmm. and stuff like that falling into the mix. And then, you know, certain so, things, you know, certain people, a certain cost of living rate should be included yearly with, if you look at right now, inflation and everything like that. Um, and then based on that, also percentages based on the performance. That's the way I look at it. So basically your pool, so for example, if, you know, it's a 5% pool, Everybody gets a minimum of one percent cost of living, and then the rest of it is all merit. Right. So someone might get three or four, and someone's going to get one. Yeah. But everybody. Yeah, I'm it. fine with that. I, I, I just think if you if you can put these things in and say, hey, this is what we want you to do, use them. Mm -hmm. Okay. It doesn't make sense. Okay. I'm okay with that. No, I agree. So that makes sense. Somehow I'd like to try and do that. Sure. Yeah. And we can let the heads of the departments decide that, and we'll do the heads of the departments. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. Because we don't want to be doing all of the employees. We want managers to do their employees. And then the select board does the department heads. And yeah, the performance review should be 2022. Pardon me? We're talking 2022, obviously. Yep. Yep. Yeah, as long as we have all our cards in place and we have. Well, the personnel manual um, talks about performance reviews. Like it, it actually says that we're supposed to be doing them. Just I don't think they ever implemented anything. So I think it's really about you know defining a basic policy around it. And it doesn't have to be And I think it'll give them a reason to do it. You know, just rather than doing it for the sake of doing it. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So we'd be doing five and heads. Yeah. Town clerk. Um. The, so the town clerk. Um. Yeah. I mean. The tax collector. I think it does. Yep. Okay. Although, well, I don't, I won't do it to you, so I'll do that right now. Okay. Um, okay. So, do we want to start with Celia since? Uh, oh, you go ahead if you're presenting. No, I'm just listening. Thank you, Celia. Okay. Um, I have a question for you guys, too. Sure. Do you know when REC is supposed to present to the Budget Committee? Oh, uh, I It's not tomorrow. Because we were not notified of that. You weren't notified? Uh, well, I have not been told when yet. And I have not forwarded my budget to the budget committee. Um, right. Well, no, you gave your presentation. Though. No, you don't. Well, we <coughs> usually give it to the budget committee, too. Okay, so that isn't the budget that they consider, though. The budget that they have to consider is what the select board presents. And I made sure, because I got an opinion from that this week from the municipal association on the process for that, so we are very clear. So the budget that goes to the budget committee is what the select board presents. However, we take input from the departments, and we convey the information that the departments are requesting to them, but the budget they have to consider is the select board's budget. I understand that. Okay. okay. But we've always presented because we've written the narrative and done our budget and we've, yep. and I know like last year, the budget was adjusted by the select board from the budget committee. Um, prior, from the rec committee, prior to going to the budget committee, it was adjusted, so. Um, oh, okay, um, say that one more time. So the budget we submitted to the select board was yep. adjusted within your budget, yep. the select board budget, was okay. the previous board. Yep. And then it was presented to the um, select, it was presented to the budget committee. I don't know, did, Paul, you may remember, did they do the budget alterations before or after the presentation? Uh, we have to give them I'm the budget. I'm gonna say, and I'm going to remember that, I just remember it being the past. I remember, but I could be wrong, but I remember you presenting to the budget first and then the select board second. Okay. Did you see the legal opinion that we got from I did. That was great. Yeah. It, it may not, it, we may not have even fallen it correctly. Right. I, I just wanted to get No, I, that, that, that was, that was, so speaking of that, well, just a little tangent. So, the New Hampshire, the NHMC, the New Hampshire Municipal Association, mm -hmm. um, Ken, did you ever, like, send an email and request a password to get into it? I didn't put the member login. Yeah, so what no. all okay. three of us can do. Yeah. I, I've done it once and I never. So you send a request. It's, it's, the website's great anyway. Okay. But if you send an email, give, give your email address and then they'll send you one map within 24 hours. It usually comes in like five, two minutes. You okay. click on that and then it'll give you a password and then we have a password to get actually into it and get any, a lot of information we need. Sorry to get off tangent. But. No. So in the past, our budget has been reviewed by, the rec budget has been reviewed by the select board and gone without large alterations, except for in 2021, this year, to the budget committee. So we've always presented the same budget. Do you want, and I've emailed it to the head of the budget committee for their review. I, is it's that going to change? Not, well, things? it's not going to be what goes on at the post budget though. So. The select board prepares the proposed budget, um, so it may not be um, what they end up getting. Um, but you're entitled; they're entitled to have the information from the department heads. Um, it's just they have really the, our attorney has um, given direction that they have to consider the select board's recommendations. So on that note, I'm just, I know Ken just said this, but on that note, 
it could come along and, and the budget committee also has to, you know, the budget committee should see the original presentation. Okay. But they'll, they recommended the fall select like boards. Okay. Okay. But I believe they'd like to see both just mm -hmm. so they can compare and see why we recommended this or that. And so John Orway, is he still the chair of the budget committee? And yes. that's who I would send it to? Yeah. Okay. I thought he not really. Was that like, was he off and back on for a little bit? Because I thought he got off for a slight period of time. Um, Never? Okay. All right. So I got um, for recreation. Yeah, what number? I saw uh, it's uh, 246. Thank you. So, recreation is not on the schedule. Okay. Um, yeah, it's not even on the schedule, so yeah. I can forward you, I, I can print, I can print this out. Um, Maybe they don't want us on because we're part of your budget? No, they still like to hear presentations. Okay. Um, so I see cemetery, town park, water, sewer, school, city highway, police, fire, okay. transfer station. I must have forgot you. So I'm, I'm sure they'll adjust you in. So if um, Fine. we can just figure out when you would like to okay. hear it. Nope. Um, I will, um, so we'll figure it out because we have the first meeting, the first presentation tomorrow with the budget committee. So we'll figure out then what they want to do. Okay. Okay. So did you get my email about the budget you proposed versus the, the budget that Caroline put together? So I did okay. get your email. My confusion is that the budget the budget has gone through a couple of different versions over the last couple of years. And so this, the template I sent you, with the Microsoft Word, with the anticipated revenue and proposed appropriations for 2020 yep. was a template that Caroline had sent us that was the format the budget committee wanted us to use. Because okay. they wanted the budget all to be submitted in the same way. That's weird. So. And then I was looking through, and I noticed that your email um, looked like what's in the town report. That's right. That's that's the like the general format that we've been using for a long time. So I'm surprised that you have this other format. So my thought was that rec, at least some, previous boards have asked that summer rec be self-sufficient, and that they were not going to tell us at that time that other programs needed to be self-sufficient because they didn't want to tie hands of the current or future boards. But Summer Rec, um, and when I say Summer Rec, I mean just Camp Raleigh. Mm -hmm. um, senior programming and anything else community-wise, we were up for negotiation, but Camp Raleigh had to be self-sufficient. So, um, the part that you sent me is just our expenditures. It's not our revenue coming in. So, so a portion okay. of this is offset? Yes. Yes. So um, last night when I was here, I went through the budget that was in the town report. Yep. And I found... There is a notation um, under charges for services. Um, I'm not sure what line that is. It says income from departments, mm -hmm. and it's 157,900. 157, and that includes REC. It says right here, includes REC. So that's where our offsetting revenue shows up. But it's not broken down into how much is coming in from REC. Um, that's, okay, I see that one, I just want to see, because it might be in the detail line, let's see, this is, here, includes rec. Okay, so it might be in the detail line of the spreadsheet, let me see, the reimbursable expenses. Um, so, if you just look at what's in the town report under rec, that's just our expenditures, and that does not show the offsetting revenue. 
Yeah. It came for all in, which is offset revenue that they, they, it's supposed to be paid by, you know, fees. So, so that is offset, right? In the last, prior to 2016, when we were, to, when we were, 2016 or 2017, when we were told that we needed offsetting revenue, the summer camp was running anywhere from $20,000 north of town expenditures. They would go over budget $20,000 or whatever. And they would just submit something at the end of the summer that said this is how much it cost. Um, the budgets were very limited and loose prior to a new committee coming in. And since that, since the new committee took over, we've been um, no more than, I believe it's around $5,000 for the last five years. Like we've um, gone over budget no more than two or three thousand dollars a year. So we've covered most of our expenses through tuition to the camp and um, to the um, donations we've received. But someone else was doing the budget prior to me and I took over in 2019 the budget after somebody resigned mm -hmm. and we haven't had camp in 2020 or 2021, so I can't tell you if we would have gone over budget or not. Okay. Um, so, so were you able to figure out how your um, expenditures tallied up into the lines that she presented? Because I couldn't make sense of it. So if I tally up just the Camp Raleigh expenses, yes, um, I come up with in your budget um, anticipated. Oh, it's anticipated revenue. Hang on, let me see. Oh, that's revenue. I'm so sorry, I did the wrong one. Camp Raleigh. Um, here we go. Um, we were asking for complete just Camp Raleigh sixty thousand four hundred and eighty. I see it. So I see where she came up with that. Um, Okay. So but I did notice that it may, um, director salary, okay, but in there is taxes and fees, payroll taxes and fees, and I don't know if she pulled that out because there's a separate line in our budget for payroll taxes and fees when you look at the annual report. Okay. So it looks like... <clears throat> so how do we get a handle on this? So I can show it to you. Well, this has the spreadsheet. So this is the spreadsheet that oops, that's cool. Um that um Celia presented. Okay. Um so the, so that sixty one seventy nine so the proposed appropriations. If you also then look back at the budget, which is here, so I got that. that's the summer camp, so we have roughly a three hundred and fifty dollar surplus um, between what we expect to bring in and what we expect to pay out. I'm sorry, how much is that? Three hundred and fifty dollars, roughly. Okay. So, so, um, so that's the difference between your revenue and expenditures yes. for this year? Yes. Okay. For the camp. Just the camp. Just the camp. Okay. And that includes, um, let me see here, that includes $2,000 in contingency and emergency funds. Okay. So if you look at the emergency funds that are included in the budget, it would be roughly um, $2,350 okay. um, Money available right now to the rec? <coughs> no, that would be how much we expect to bring in versus how much we oh, okay. And we do try, um, if we're going to bring in less kids, we will hire less staff. So that will even out. <coughs> um, so that if there are not as many staff members, there's not as much taxes, there's not as many fees, there's none 
as much outgoing expense as coming in. And so it should be <coughs> flat at best, right? We try, yes. Um, so, but when I look at this, so I look at anticipated revenue, 68,482. Uh, that's for 2022. So anticipated revenue is 68,482. <coughs> and then expected expenditures is 6179. 67, one, seven, one. One. No, for the whole program. Eight, one, oh, eight, one. for the whole, that's, that's, that's for winter and, yep. and everything a, else, too. And a rec so, right? Yep. And so, you're, when you add the 60,000 plus, so we say 65,000 is, 60,500 dollars would be, for Camp Raleigh, which is offsetting revenue in there. And then $13,000 we are asking for a rec director. And um, if you, on the, my spreadsheet, the final sheet, it has a rec director breakdown. Um, and we are asking 10 or 12 hours a week. And those are different um, ranges of prices. We don't, and that's for 52 weeks a year. We don't have to do 52 weeks a year. We don't have to do 10 or 12 hours. We could do five to 10 hours, five to seven hours a week, depending on what the town wanted. But a previous select board had asked that we get a rec director so that you have somebody that's employed by the town, overseen by the rec, or overseen by the select board, um, has knowledge of doing budgets and presentations, can be on call for all of our programs, and can um, run and generate <coughs> programs and fees. Check with some questions. This is all run by volunteers right now. Is there enough work for 52 weeks a year? So maybe doesn't, not. It doesn't make sense. Um, but <clears throat> we try to expand it to do like a senior coffee hour and so like once or twice a month getting seniors out or to do something providing senior programming um, we the rec committee spends hours doing research like we want to get the, we've been asked to put the ice rink back we have one member who has spent hours coordinating with the fire department cemetery department and looking online for how much an ice rink would be and that an ice rink that would last is roughly five to ten thousand dollars. So our, we've <clears throat> drastically increased our winter rec line to purchase a um, ice rink. So we put seven thousand. That's, that's what the seven thousand is. Yes, that would be a um, Palmer type ice rink that. Um, would go next to the fire department or on the baseball field, which is cemetery land. We have permission to use that. And it would be usable for several years. And if we could get the ice rink, then we could charge a small fee or request donations. Does that cover insurance costs for it as well? Um, I don't know what the... In oh, We're covered under the town insurance, and it's a skate at your own risk. Mm -hmm. The pre previous board made sure that the... Um, that some of their uh, liabilities were released by putting signage up, and the signage is still there. So it's a skate at your own risk and leaves you with some of the liability. And we're covered under the town Primex insurance, last time I checked. And we get use of the school at no charge for the summer rec program. So we don't have to pay a recreational fee. And at some point, we will be sitting down at CAIP to talk about rec space specifically, because my understanding is that the rec has land deeded to them. Um, the Sandy Banks property has been deeded for recreational purposes. So if down the line, um, we just don't have the manpower to sit on the CIP now. And that's why a rec director would be helpful, because they could 
come up with a couple of ideas for what to do with the Sandy Banks property and spearhead sitting down with the CIP and saying we would like a basketball facility or baseball diamond or an indoor facility where we can house the summer rec and all of the equipment that goes with recreation and we would like it in X number of years. Are you too familiar with Sandy Banks? So it's actually literally all behind Main Street Falls boundary, but there's a little, I'm going to say, I don't know, it's somewhere between 11 and 16 acres. That in 1936 was donated to the town for regular <coughs> acres. Um, and it was, <coughs> it was brought up, um, I think it was originally brought up in conservation about what it can be used for. So somewhere down, Somewhere down the avenue, that's obviously something I think the select board should be looking at for Sandy Banks, but not on our radar right now. Yeah, that's a long-term goal. It's, <clears> a, <throat> it's a nice piece of land that the town has kind of neglected and forgotten about. So thanks for bringing up that, because I kind of forgot about myself. Uh, if, and we, if we go back to the recreation director just yep. for a minute. Yeah. Yep. Um, how many hours a week is that? <clears throat> you There's a, a spreadsheet oh, there. Oh, I didn't see that. It's about hours um, per year, the rate of pay. Costs. <clears throat> so this person is different. This rec director is different from the Camp Raleigh director. The Camp Raleigh director has a wage of fifty-four thousand dollars <throat> in the Camp Raleigh budget, which is paid for by camper fees. How much? Five thousand four hundred for eight weeks of work. Right. The salary of position. <clears throat> And then there's a, a, and that is $15 an hour for the Camp Raleigh summer camp. And I've done research and I've applied for jobs of my own as a rec director. And you are looking at anywhere from $18 to $25 an hour for a rec director. Um, some communities have actually gotten assistance, like the town of Elliott. They um, work with York Hospital. They write every year a grant to York Hospital, and they get six months of um, salary from York Hospital for one of their assistant directors okay. to, to promote healthy communities. UNH also has a rec director um, program. program, and they have a program where we could hire a rec director in 50% of the money would come from the work study program. But we would need help from the select board to set that up and we need to coordinate with UNH. So there are other alternative funding options for this so it's not the whole thing has to come out of the town budget. And we have started a rec director, um, I believe it was passed, not started, but um, um, passed by a previous select board, a rec director job description that Caroline had. And the sticking point with the rec committee is it said it would be paid $13,000 a year, or up to $13,000 a year. It didn't say how many hours, it didn't say anything. So there could be times of the year where they only work two or three hours a week, if that. And there are times of year, maybe during the summer, for getting ready for Camp Raleigh, that they handle the registrations <coughs> and stuff like that. Yep. That they're working 15 hours a week getting things ready and coordinating buses for field trips and stuff like that. So if I do <coughs> the math on the proposed appropriation versus the proposed revenue, um, I come up with about a $12,700 um, increase in the budget, which is pretty much the rec director position, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. We had the rec director in there last year, and the select board decided to take it out. It wasn't. Um, it is. It is roughly the cost of the rec director, but it didn't come from those lines. What we did was um, in 2019 when we presented our budget, um, or 2020 and 2021. 2020 camp was canceled. So 21, our budget um, it reflects a decrease in camp costs and 
camp tuition because we didn't expect to get back families, which we may not get back families. Mm -hmm. We had been running mm -hmm. anywhere from 95 to 120 families. And um, we are expecting like 60 families to come back, if that, because of kids aging out of the program and so forth. And Camp Raleigh tends to break even. We had a teen camp for two years that went Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and it was kids uh, 12 and 12 to 15, and they would go every day off site to field trips. Um, and that camp actually made money. This camp, what, what's the age group? This is um, going into first grade through going into eighth grade. Um, so the teen camp actually helped us offset some of the over budget lines, but um, two years ago, the end of 2019, we were asked to eliminate the teen camp and to replace it with a rec director because the previous select board wanted a rec director. So, so the rec director, um, so at 12 hours a week, and it may not be needed 12 hours a week. Um, so is, is there any plan for this rec director, I mean, like ideas, they, have they already started brainstorming ideas um, for what they would do? Yeah. Um, and, and do you have somebody in mind? We don't have somebody in mind okay. um, at the moment, but we would like, um, we've sat down with the rec director and Elliot, invited her to one of our meetings, um, we've been the committee members have been to Barrington and sat down with their rec directors. I've sat down with the select board in Northwood <clears throat> and talked to them about what their rec director does. And um, some we've talked to the rec director in Somersworth. But we have been also tasked by a previous board on updating all of our manuals. So we're in the process of updating our camper manual for Camp Raleigh and our employee manual for Camp Raleigh that needs to be overseen by somebody, and that would be helpful. <coughs> we would like to upgrade our website and have our own website where people can register online. There's a couple of different programs, including MyRec.com, where people could pay for programs online without, without a fee to the town. And the difficulty of setting up that all of the Camp Raleigh registrations are now done by paper or um, by committee members, and we'd love to have that camp director take over that, take over logistics of getting buses and stuff with camp, a lot of the camp stuff, and then like setting up places for senior activities, like finding a location where seniors could get out things, Keep getting a rec director newsletter out, opening things up to the community. I know in Exeter, during the pandemic, their rec committee went out and gave like boxes of activities to families during the summer. They left activities in different neighborhoods so that the parents and the kids had something to do during the summer because they couldn't have camps. So there's a variety of things um, that the rec director could do. And Caroline, at one point, had the rec director job description, <coughs> which included some of those things. And as a committee, we have um, a couple of job descriptions. We have a, web, a Facebook page. We'd like the rec director to take over and update and be in charge of. We um, want them to be in charge of our money, doing our budget, have some consistency in the budget, because this is my second or third year doing it, but it's been is through five people. Is that a normal function for that director to be doing those things? Yes. The, it would be part of like their schooling at like UNH would be figuring out a budget and stuff like that. Okay. <clears throat> well the numbers make sense to me now. I mean as I see how she put it all together, so that's great. Thank you. So So okay. one of the things that's it's been a concern and has been brought up is unfortunately the lack of residents getting involved with rec. Trying to it's the lack of residents getting involved in anything in this town. 
Yeah, right. That's so, my concern. So is, you know, one of the one of the, one of the committees we tried out is getting a few people more involved with this wreck, and it's declined and it's declined again. Mm -hmm. So I'm just throwing that out there. Mm -hmm. um, so I I will say that I did have a conversation with Kelly Anderson. I think she was the rec director for a while. She was the chair of the rec committee right. yes. until. Earlier, she resigned and Mike um, took over. She would. She t she stepped down from chair when we had elections in 2020, and Mike Blau became the chair, and she resigned earlier in the last year or 18 months, and then um, Mike Blau gave up his chairmanship as of this year, and I took over the chair and Mike's co-chair slash vice chair. Okay. So we're working on it together. How many people do you have in the committee? Right now, there are, um, we had five members, one decided not to rejoin, and we had an ex-officio. So right now we have five members with the ex-officio included, who is Paul. And then we have two volunteers that are not committee members, and one has stepped up, he coaches um, basketball in Dover, or he has experience coaching basketball in Dover. So he has um, stepped up to um, take over the basketball program at the school, which is part of our winter rec. And then we have a couple more people who we've reached out to to possibly join, come to a meeting and join. And Kelly, of course, is willing to volunteer, but she's not got the time right now to be sitting on the committee. So one of my concerns is <clears throat> um, there's no real funding for a rec director to work with. So I see the winter rec, you have the skating rec, right? um, and then there's, there's $500 in totals on senior program, but I don't see where that's being allocated. Um, it doesn't show it just says five hundred dollars total for senior programs, but um, so so in terms of um, funding resources for the rec director to work with, what were you thinking? So there's a couple different ways we can go. We were hoping to get a rec director in place first, and then there are um, there are a couple different ways we could go. Um, there are. A couple of articles that were published a while ago through town and country, uh, New Hampshire town and city, that are different funding sources for recreation. Okay. So, um, one of them is the Recreation Revolving Fund. We would have to put a Warren article on the ballot, but um, it's basically. Um, I'm looking at it right now because it's saved to my computer. It's the capital reserve fund set aside money for future major expenses, or it's what a capital reserve fund is, the special reserve fund. Um, so this fund gives the municipalities a chance to um, collect money for recreation for different classes and programs and not let it lapse at the end of the year. So the rec department would have our money in this special fund, and then as we um, have um, funds coming in, we would expend them to cover it. And so you could add, like if we have a class going on, or we could add $10, $15 to the <coughs> weekly registration for Camp Raleigh to cover the rec director costs. or. You put five dollars on to cover the rec director fees and stuff like that. But you can't go and have this huge amount of money that's not lasting year to year because then it looks like we're just trying to hoard money, which we don't want to do. Well, I think, I mean, if I were to think it through, then you would have at least a line item, you know, for like uh, publications and marketing and. Um, and you're going to need probably to like you're going to need to like provide certain supplies for some of these things, and um, so I think that is kind of missing from the plan. 
Uh, under the rec director, expenditures or appropriations? No, it's like they need money to work with. Right. So that that was part of our issue when the when a previous select board said take the fifteen thousand dollars that we had all allocated for teen camp and put it into a rec director, and then they did the job description and it said up to thirteen dollars, thirteen thousand dollars annually for the salary. For the salary. So that, 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 that uses all the funds. And they said, well, they don't have to use all the funds. We could, they could prorate. They could start in July, and then whatever they don't, like the first six months of the year would be supplies and stuff like that. So on my <coughs> proposed budget, I just have it um, as, I believe, rec director. Um, but I do... Under rec director, I have it all zeroed out. Salary, payroll, taxes, insurance, office equipment, yep. and just have a total line. <coughs> so that would be up to the select board. Okay. I leave that up to your judgment. Okay. And um, Mike and Mike Lau and I really feel passionate that um, a rec director could be beneficial because they could keep track of the money and stuff. And that's another thing is like, the camp money, like there's petty cash there, and there's nobody there that's a full-time town employee, or not a full-time town, but a year-round town employee that's accountable to you guys <coughs> covering that money, okay. if that makes sense. And they found a couple years ago a checkbook that the select board knew nothing about with $2,000 in it. Um, that had been in somebody's personal possession. <clears throat> so I agree, there should be some breakdown of that, and I don't know what it is. And until we get a pos person in this position, we don't know how many hours it will be. And uh, Caroline used to tell us to remember that in the beginning, there's a learning curve, so the, the beginning might be heavy hours, like, um, maybe setting up a website and registrations and stuff like that would be at the beginning of the year and then come Christmas time <clears throat> or during the summer when there's a Camp Raleigh director, they might be able to alleviate some of their hours. It won't be as many hours because you won't be planning as much. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Sonia. You're welcome. Thanks, Sonia. Any other questions? Yeah, do you guys have any thoughts or comments right now, though? Um, I think we need to define that more. Right, yeah, it's, too it's, too yeah, it's too loosey goosey. Yeah, I know the rec, rec committee, the two people, three people, yeah. are really involved with really Push for it, I can see why. Um, and Camp Row is not tax funded anyway, so that's yeah, I'm right concerned so that's, about that. Right, but I don't know we're on board of that. But, um, well, I, think, right. I, think, I think there's certain things that. We should support, like, I can't, I don't think I'm bull escape right to I mean, I think a more, more, more economical idea is unfortunately maybe try to get people and volunteer and see if we can, yeah. you know, kind of like do the old way type. Of so I, I, I think that, right, I think somebody ought to look into, like, relationships with UNH or something else. You know, maybe we can get funding. Huh? Yeah, but that's but, but yeah, but <clears throat> no, maybe we talked about it three or four meetings, but no one ever kind of followed through for that. So, all right. So, and then I think some of the offsetting revenue um, is estimated. So, I mean, for the overall budget, um, it could it's it's just an it's an estimate it's estimated revenue. So. I mean, hopefully Camp Raleigh would take off this year. Right, but we're just in the so but we, but we, 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 just, we should assume for Camp Raleigh it'll be even up, right? Um, maybe. Because we can control the headcount. 
Yeah. We don't assume, but right. it has to be mandated that it's not tax funded. It's just it's it's right. all, that's, that's, that's what I meant. Don't control the headcount. Right? I mean, before we present this to the budget committee, I mean, they, we may want to think about not having a rec director even considered for budget. Um. Yeah. What do you think? I think there's a few people trying really hard to. No, I'm, I, no, no, I'm just saying the committee's. There's a few people trying really hard to in the rec department. They're not getting, like I said, the support of the community that they need. It really needs to have more people involved in this. We should have and, they're, they're, and they're relying on a, a rec committee director to do everything because they're not getting help from the community, is my opinion. I, don't, I, think, I can't see it being tax funded. Jack didn't ask the question that he asked everybody else, which is if you had to give something up, what would it be? The ice skating rink or the rec director? Um, because combined, those two things is um, a twenty thousand dollar. Yeah, it was twenty thousand. Well, like I said, I mean, the ice rinks are nice and dear, ice nice idea and stuff, but there's still some unanswered questions. Like at the end of the season, where you do it, and I just think old school way of, I mean, building rinks with you know some thought and process of like getting some pallets, and mm -hmm. volunteers, firewood, and people, three or four sure. people get together. Yeah. It makes more sense. Um, I agree. I mean, I think definitely that could be a volunteer effort. So, mm -hmm. so um, I mean, we, we, we don't have to decide tonight. I mean, my opinion is... We, they don't even have a date to present. So. Right. But my opinion is we have to be cautious on both those things. Um, so I think for the, for the rec director, like, I'm not adverse to that, but I think there needs to be more of a plan for it. A definition of what they're doing when they're doing it. Right. And how they're going to fund some of um, the activities that this person might generate, um, and also, um, I would say if we're going to do it, we would ease into it. Like I wouldn't say 20 hours, you know, at the top rate. I'd say maybe try 10 hours at the mid rate, and see, you know, how it kind of picks up in the first year. Yeah, but I don't think it needs to be this year. I'm just saying that, but we, we can we can go further than that. All right. Yeah. Um, so let's, um, or maybe, you get, like you said, they did propose a half of a part-time thing too, so yep. that may be no round, round. So for the spreadsheets that she sent, Paul, um, there's, a, there's tabs in the bottom that show the breakdown of the hourly rate and the hours and the costs. Okay. okay. Um, so do we want to talk about <clears throat> admin support personnel first? Um, so that is line six of the budget. Um, and so there's some detail behind that um, that you guys, I don't know if you had a chance to look at the spreadsheet, but the detail behind that line is <clears throat> Oh, here it is, okay. So <clears throat> currently the town administrator um, I had, um, so Chuck was going to give me current, um, I only have proposed, <clears throat> he was going to give me current, um, <clears throat> the town administrator, which I think is probably the same, um, is budgeted at $65,650, which based on MRI's um, email, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be too low. Um, um, Alan Gould gave me a range on, it was, let me see, it was, I thought it was 80. I think you're. I think you're right, Jack. It's in there. It's right around eighty. I'm pretty sure it's eighty. Yeah. Um, he gave us a range, um, and I think at, even on the other end, it was probably a little higher mm -hmm. than that. So I think we need to rethink um, that that um, part of that line item.
you guys want to? I think Thank you said eighty because there's not that many out there. The talent, the talent pool is not there. Yeah. Well, that's that's substantial. Yeah. From what we're allocated, so. Yeah. It is. Oh, yeah, here it is. Um, so Deering was advertised with a salary range of eighty and Ashland to ninety-seven. Um, Deering has a thin um, pool. Ashland has a stronger pool. So I think realistically, um, and he kind of recommended, you know, to, to set something maybe in the middle, and then based on experience, he would make the offer based on experience. What what are the population of those two towns you get? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I think they're both small towns. So. Well, you come in next week, right? Yeah. I know that's some kind of... Come in the 11th. The week of the 11th. Oh, yes. Uh, just come in the 11th. Um, oh, 12th. Oh, 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 12th. 12th, yeah. I think we need to get some insight in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it may have to be kind of 24 hour job or something like that. Um, temporary? Well, yeah. He's proposed given that we propose a full time position, I don't know what to talk about, but I don't think, I don't know if we're ready to, you know, pay $80,000 to a town administrator. That's a full time term right? Right, so, but that's what we had. Um, so he's coming on the, uh, let me see on the town budget. So the town budget um, is November 17th. What is November 17th? Um, the town budget presentation oh. for the budget committee. Okay. I'm sorry. Yep, that's okay. Um, so that's the 17th. So we have some time on that. Yeah, I think we need to get a download from him and, mm -hmm. and talk about what we're looking for. Yeah, let's move on to move on to. Uh, anything else you want to bring up on that? So, well, so the other things in that momentum. Um, so, Caroline had proposed a three percent increase, um, and that covers Salme and Chuck as well. Okay. Um, so, I will. I'll bring it up here quick, mm -hmm. but we'll bring it up again. So, previously on this town administrator. Tax collector found found was found in that, so there was no recommendation. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. I want to find out about that. Okay. Well, the tax collector that there's no proposal there, and we, so we have to make that recommendation as well, which is, is it's in the finance section. This is in the executive section. Okay. So, um, so how much are we now? Is it fifteen? I'm fifteen. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't show an increase. Like it doesn't show the increase of three percent in yours. I don't know what Ch well, I have Chuck's here, um, so I need to get what it currently is, and I sent an email to Chuck about that and see what the three percent means uh, for those other two positions. Um, yeah, so I think those it's just a little bit of an open question on that, which isn't made yet. Three percent, I mean, I think when we talk about cost cents. of living, it's always been two percent anyways, and they're trying to do. She's trying to do a market adjustment for Chuck in this as well. Yeah. Which um, oh, I think um, we need to consider because he's now picking up more responsibility. Well, and we also have to factor in what this town administrator is going to do in terms is it going to be a part time? Is it going to be full time? Is Chuck, I mean, if we do a part time town administrator, then we really need to consider, I think, Chuck is a full time administrative assistant because he's already working 31 hours and, you know, not.
not always keeping his head above water. And he actually commented that Salome picks up you know, quite a bit of work to cover him. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we have to look at that whole picture and how all three positions kind of come together. That's just my opinion. No, I don't disagree. I, don't, I, I agree with that. So, because Salome, you have, um, he says you average about seven hours a week. I guess so, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's funny, I do it based on what needs doing rather than yeah. a time commitment. Yeah, that's what he, he said that, you know, you do a lot of the filing and um, mm -hmm. um, so he kind of outlined her responsibilities, although I would like to kind of get that on paper too, a little bit of a job description around that, about what you're doing. <laughs> um, and it, even if you just put it in a Word doc and say, you know, filing, you know, maps, whatever, sure. just to kind of give us an idea. Because if you ever decide to not do this anymore, we have to fill mm -hmm. that gap. Um, so I, I think that, you know, a big thing is, is are we looking at full-time town administrator or part-time town administrator? And what does that mean for Chuck and Sally? Right. So I don't know what we can comment on this the proposed budget for this right now. I don't think we can. I mean, we can, but it's, there's a few issues that, I mean, I, I just can't see $80,000 for me if we went on a full-time town benefit. So, some things we got to talk about is, is it going to be 24 hours a week? Right. Full-time, I mean, as, and then, get a description can we of what Chuck does. Can we, can we do that? Or, well, and that was like, part of the transition check. process, yeah. is figuring out what needs to get done. So that spreadsheet was to cut, get an idea of what needs to get done on a day-to-day -day basis or a yearly basis. Or, um, and she also provided me with Chuck's job description, so we have an idea what he's doing. So I think we have to get a big picture of everything that needs to happen to operate the um, executive office also. Did she, did she provide any other job, job descriptions at all? Hers and Chuck's. Nobody else's? Um, no. Right. Um, so well, you wouldn't want to move on to... Yeah. Uh, so, 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 so we're going to hold on this part there until we talk to MRI. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think as long as we're not presenting the town... Hold on down. Yeah. That's what I have um, in this double check here. I'm curious about what my eyes position would be on a part time. So, the police fire town clerk is on October 6th, so we can make sure we get that straight up. Um, and then, um, library, cemetery, and town clerk. It must have been a library town clerk place here um, on the 27th. And then, town, water, and sewer is on the um, November 17th. Um, so, so I have on my notes, I have rent that we've already done. Yep, let's do town clerk. Let's do tax clerk. You can. I can listen to what you guys have to say. <laughs> and I can certainly yep. give away two cents. Uh, as a, as a citizen, <laughs> I'll sure. sit over there. And yeah, I have that's one. fine. Um, you just and can't vote call. That's no, nice no, 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 I'm going to be... Okay. Um, so I think as a minimum, well, so there's the whole issue of the compensation policy, which we can't solve tonight. Um, I think that's something we definitely have to deal with that. Um, so let me just give you guys a history quick. So sure. I would like this, this is the way I look at it. And if I'm speaking wrong, tax it, tax it, collect it correctly. But when the town administrator was made full time, the previous board, it may have been the previous previous board made it a function of tax collection reported to town administrator. Okay, mm -hmm. they erred there. Yep. They erred big time there because tax collector, town clerk, are appointed and elected, so they should have been important to the they should have been important directly to the select board. Okay. I agree. So I'm just going to say a few things, and then I'm going to let you guys talk with. The tax collector was allocated 20 hours a week. She's doing a job six hours a week. Okay. Um, it takes in 5.3 million dollars of revenue, and every year the audits come back with no issues. She 
she's married 12 years and she knows the end and outs of the town. So I pre I, I want to say that the last four years the select board they air it, but they also were not they weren't compensating the tax collector that I believe should have been. And I'm gonna leave it at that and let you guys talk about it, but those four, it, it should have been for four years. She should have been appointed to the select board, not town administrator. And I think because of that there was when I came on to the board. It was Miss Hamble. Well, yeah, Miss Hamble, when I came on to the board, I'm just gonna give a little history. When I came on to the board, one of the things, the first things I was involved with was a conflict between the board and town administrator and Kate. And I thought coming onto the board I'd be able to just use that, but it, it got worse. And there should have been no there should have been no, Kate should have been reporting directly to the select board, and there should have been no inter involvement, or very little involvement with the town administrator. Kate so I'm just going to bring that up. Huh? Kate is an elected official, so she, I don't think she's supposed to report to Right, but there was a conflict there. Conflict. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm just going to leave it all that. That's the history I've seen. Um, and you guys can go ahead and talk about tax about what. Um, so I'll just say I agree that the tax collector should be reporting to the select board as an appointed official. Um, I think um, I think it's kind of weird because I looked for some descriptions about the town administrator's um, responsibilities, and there wasn't really a lot of information out there. It was all town manager. Um, right. But basically what I read is the administrator is kind of the liaison. Um, so I don't know that they necessarily is, are supposed to have the power to manage in the way the town manager is. Um, so, I mean, that's my position. Is I, I agree. I think that, that appointed people um, should be reporting as to the select board. Employees report could report to a town administrator. Agree. And when, if if it was a, a I, if it was a larger town, like a lot larger town, and we did have a town manager. And the, that's select that's board, a the, the, and the select board, as a power, made the town manager have the town clerk and the town administrator put to that. I mean, tax collector, I think that's legal. This is, this is a whole different situation. So. Do we want to take public input? Yeah. The, um, only, sure. the only thing I have to say is, is they, they had a committee who made the decision on whether it to be a town administrator or a town manager. And Lorraine Hansen was actually the chair of that committee, and she might have information on that. And Kathy Lamb was also on that committee, and Dee Neetalk was on that committee. And they did find the job descriptions for, for um, town administrators versus town managers okay. in, the t in the state. So prior to that, did the tax collector report to the select board? Mm -hmm. Can I speak? I mean, well, I, I am right here, and I guess I'm questioning why <laughs> I'm not being treated well, as other hey, hey, individuals right here. here. And, and you really don't have to go home with it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, yes, historically when I came here in 2011, I was mm -hmm. hired by the board. I was an appointed tax collector. Mm -hmm. I reported to the board. Um, Are you appointed now? I am appointed now. I am appointed yearly. Um, it was only when the town administrator took the position that this whole compensation package, um, a concerted effort to change this position was undertaken. I don't know why. I have my suspicions, which I'm not going to state here because I do think it's irrelevant. Um, this is not a path that needs to be proceeded down. I've been appointed for 12 years. Mm -hmm. um, my audits are flawless. I've always presented a budget prior to this past board. Um, the whole dynamic, and it, it, I don't know why it transitioned, but it was what they wanted. Um, I expressed the fact that I'm appointed, and, and you know, if they wanted to have the town administrator oversee me. It was more because I kept falling through the cracks, so to speak. 
the board didn't know what to give me as a raise because no one was directly overseeing me. Basically, I just come in, I do my job, it happens, the audit's flawless, we have $6.4 million, great, not a problem. But when it came to time for a raise and I would ask for an increase, everyone would say, well, what do you do? Well, I do my job, I do it well, and there are never any issues. So the board's reasoning to have the town administrator oversee me was for that, performance evaluations. For three years that she oversaw me, I never received a performance evaluation. So it, we're right back to square one. And I did notice when I asked for the budget that she submitted, because I wasn't asked for input, um, her proposal was to, to give um, Chuck a 3% and there was zero recommended for myself. So. I think part of that is because she wanted to pursue the compensation policy issue. And where we left it, even when she was here, is that we can't pursue it for one appointed official. We have to look at the whole picture. Absolutely. Any appointed official, elected official. So if we're going to go down that path, we're going to look at everybody, not just you. Thank you. Yeah. Because it, 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 so this whole time has been judge, singling who's, me out. Who's appointed? George, my, you? Myself, George, um, and the fire chief are all appointed positions. I believe there are others, overseers mm -hmm. of the fences. Yes. Oh, there yes. is some there other police. little yeah. but department heads. But are, correct. So you have to look at all the whole compensation. If there's a, a question about how appointed officials are compensated, it can't be just one person. Absolutely. And I agree. You know, the way that, again, I'm, I am just, a, 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 I get a paycheck, a salary, so to speak. Um, I don't get benefits. When I came, you know, do they get benefits? The others? They, yes, George they do. Does. George, George gets does. a pension, and, right. health benefits. He gets everything mm -hmm. as an appointed official. I, as a 16 hour a week appointed official, get a salary. And again, I was getting vacation and sick time, which Ed and I, 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 I mean, um, yeah, Ed Jansen and myself, we agreed that we would just keep it in line with. The, the personnel policy, just because it, it was fair. I wasn't going to ask for five weeks of vacation if I had only been here for three years. So it's just the natural progression that I have assumed, well, after 12 years, I should get four weeks of vacation because that's what other employees of the municipality also receive. Yeah, so for a um, certain number of hours, over a certain number of hours, part, even part-time people get PTO which I had never heard of before, but that's been their policy for a long time, as I understand, mm -hmm. even when Bev was here. Um, we were all part-time. I mean, what you have to remember is uh, the town clerk, the tax collector, and the bookkeeper, we were the only three individuals here in this town office. We all worked 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And to do the job that we do, we don't make a lot of money. And um, you have to give us some benefits. And, and maybe that was their way of saying, OK, we'll give you sick and vacation. Um, but it's challenging to take sick and vacation because I'm the only person in my office. When I'm not here, it just backs up. And you know, it's worked. I, I've made it work for 12 years. I'm, I never come and say, I want more hours. I need this. I need that. I, 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 I get a paycheck. and. That's all I want. I, I want to be recognized for the outstanding job that I do for this town and that I have done for 12 years. And with every new board, I find myself revisiting it. revisiting it every time and trying to prove myself. And honestly, the only way I can prove myself is via my annual audit. Because even if you all are supervising me, you don't know what I do day to day. I didn't even know you were here. <laughs> so, so go ahead. You have, you have a job description that was... I do have a job description. Oh. And it's a job description that I drafted for oh, the nice. last select board Excellent. that I provided to the town administrator. So why that? she wasn't aware that it existed, I really don't know. Can you email that to us? I please? would, I would like be happy to. Happy to. And I would like to elaborate on it because she had asked me to draft one, which I did quickly. And, and I'm assuming that that's what she submitted to the select board. You haven't seen it. OK. So, so whatever you send us is the first draft. OK, perfect. Um, so I do have to like bring up this subject about um, deputies. Okay. For, for a long time, you and Kate were deputies. We were. 
And I really feel like, in the interest of the town, we need to get back to having deputies. You know, um, so it's how, a that's right. That's that right. right. They co they cover for each other. I think they still have, but I won't comment on no, that. No, we're not. Okay. But, right. So what <coughs> happened was, um, with the last board. Um, Well, we'll start with this. So when Kate had her falling out, so to speak, and decided to leave, um, Chuck and I stepped in and manned that office and performed the duties of the town clerk, and I still did my job as tax collector. So you were doing both? I was doing both, 16 hours a week. I have another job, Jack, so I could... When I could, I was giving five, six additional hours. I was doing whatever I could. Mm -hmm. um, it was a heavy lift, and not once was I thanked. I don't know if Chuck was. I'm assuming he wasn't either. That it was the expectation of the prior board that those of us here, being Chuck and I, would step up and just do the job. I disagreed with that wholeheartedly. This is my, my town, and I was happy to do what I could. Um, again, this is a job. So I don't do, you, do you think that we should have the deputy now? Well, I had, so it came up that um, they wanted a deputy, but I had some personal issues going on that I was focusing on okay. at the time, and in my absence of additional time, they offered the deputy position to Chuck. It was an additional 10 hours a week. Um, I was never asked or approached about that. When my personal situation, it, 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 I came back and I was told that Chuck was made the, he can't be a deputy because he's not a resident, so he's an assistant to the town clerk. Um, I did a written proposal to the board because I found out after the fact and I basically proposed appointing me as the deputy, giving me that 10 hours and all of the benefits that they would get from me as a resident being the deputy. And you're all trained. And I was all trained. And they chose not to do that. They rejected that <coughs> vehemently. So I stepped back and I washed my hands of it. I have now been offered additional hours from my other job. I work for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Um, so I don't have an additional 10 hours to give to the town to if work I, as the deputy. Well, do you have four? Would you be interested in 20 hours, go back to 20 hours, and being the deputy? I can't do both jobs. I, I, I can't do both jobs. And um, Okay. We would need to discuss it. The way that I was treated with my proposal. Um, it's a different board. It is a different board. And, but I would like to, to have a discussion. If, if, if you would like to discuss that with me and give me an opportunity to digest it and, and think about it, um, I'm happy to entertain it. So um, I, I would like the two of us to sit down and have a conversation. And I'm just gonna I would my, enjoy that, and Jack. I'm just going to give my two cents here as a <laughs> observer. Um, the proposal was presented. The proposal is in the minutes. The proposal, they are in the minutes, but the proposal was presented, and it was told to the tax collector that you know it, it's already been provided to Chuck. They're not going to take that money back mm -hmm. to Chuck now. Um, so I, I stepped in as a board member and said, you know, myself as a shipyard boss. And to me, it only makes sense, and I'm thinking for the town that, you know, I'm not going to take a mechanic that's learned the job for six months and put him on someone that's just learning the job. I'm going to put a mechanic that has five years' experience with the mechanic learning the job. I kind of explained, to me, it didn't make sense that you're going to have someone that's just learning the job. But I'll go careful on this, but then the following meeting, I was also brought up in the, in the minutes that um, myself as a select board member is really shouldn't be commenting or have the opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like stepping over the bounds of 
So I'm, I'm laying back here and I'm just giving my opinion. No, I, okay. I think you can have an opinion, you can't vote on anything. Oh. You know, everybody is entitled, even as a resident, to speak. So, so I think the board aired it, aired originally on that 10 hours. I think it should have been at least split, but I'm going to leave that alone. So does Chuck still have the um, 10 hours? When, when yeah. she's, you know, when, are you guys, yeah. Okay. Let's have, we've got something. Yeah. One of the things, Chuck had to give up another job, or hours at another job, and the board was asked, this has to, you know, if you make this decision, you are affecting his life, you know, or... I'm, I'm losing it. That if, if he's going to take the 10 hours, or they're going to offer the 10 hours to him, then he has to give up something else. And the board was, and you were there, you were right. all. Right, but it was never presented at all to the tax collector. Well, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying as, so after they gave it to Chuck, then that comes along and they felt they can't. Take it away. Take right. it away right. because yeah. they, they have already decided. Sal May brings up a good point. That's a valid, okay. That is point. valid. The point I guess it should have been addressed at the beginning is, why wasn't it discussed? Why wouldn't okay. you discuss with your staff at the time? Yeah. Staff being right. Chuck. So how do I we collect a hay, but I'm gonna leave that so we can't go back and No, no, no. How do we how do we fix it? Right, exactly. So, so, you guys you kind of, so now Chuck already has his, his plate is full and he told me he hasn't even had time to help Dan. And his plate is very full. So I can see that time being absorbed into additional responsibility. Especially today. especially if we change the role. That's right. So I think it still opens back up this need for deputy, and it's real to me, Andrew. It's really more about coverage for you guys. If you need to take a day, or he needs to take a day, I think we want to make sure that the public is serviced. So not that you necessarily need to be in there helping them all the time, but it's more about coverage to me for the benefit of the public that we have somebody available. That's my thought about it. So if you want to give that some. I mean, I'm happy to have a discussion with you all and... and Them. Okay. No, I, I, I'd, like, I'd like the three of us to sit down. Okay. Let's set a time and sit down. Sure. Okay. through this. So just some stuff to think about. Um, sure. But I, I do agree um, that um, having... Giving market increases, cost of living increases, whatever you want to call them to everybody except the tax collector is appropriate. I think we do have to consider something. It just, I think we need to, at this point, think about is it a merit um, increase or market adjustment for her willingness to go back to cross training and coverage, or is it cost of living? You know? So, what is it? Well, the other thing we need to look at too is should we have her report back to the select board? Yeah. I mean, if, if, you t if you take a look at it, now is it what we're going in for a new town administrator, we ought to look at it from that perspective, too. Well, now, that's our, how we can shape it. I don't know that our other appointed officials actually reported to Caroline. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was a point person, for sure. Yeah. Um, but I don't know that they rep they actually reported to her. So I would say if, that we should treat all the appointed officials the same. That, that's exactly what I'm yeah. trying to say. Maybe now's the time to revert back mm -hmm. in the other direction. Right. You know, I guess one thing we really got to be clear on, for, not the tax life, but on the high town ministry, exactly what the role is. And that, what, what boards we take over and we run. You know, a lot of time of previous town ministry was spending a lot of, you know, storm water and a lot of things that maybe the new town administrator won't have their feet in. Right. So. We need to clear it. Um, we got to clarify the job. Yeah. So. And is it full time? Is it part time? So right now we're leaving it. That we're, um, we're, well, I, I think if, Andrew it, has to consider. Yeah, if she's interested in yeah. the extra four hours and go back to twenty hours and be. And, and I think we we will give her a raise. We just got to figure out how to do it. That's right. what, what we want. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's why I want to sit down and talk. I was not privy to this. I didn't know what it was. I just printed it out and saw the zero. Um, I had emailed Caroline asking her for this. Um, I would like the same time to digest this. Um, I don't believe that my receiving a salary increase should hinge upon whether or not I'm 
willing to act as no. a uh, uh, We're not but saying that at all. No. Oh, we're, we're not saying, we're just saying we'd like you to consider that as well. And just for, for the board's knowledge, Kate and I did, Kate and I had a great working relationship and, and it was a wonderful work environment. And Dan had some huge shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. And he's doing a, a really good job, but it's a huge learning curve. Kate right. did this for 20 years. Right. And, and it's and gonna take him a long time. And that's the value of you helping them. Mm -hmm. Well, I do have to say, they've changed everything. So they now have a new software system that I haven't been part of. Um, but you know the dynamics. I do know the dynamics. That's the key. Um, and while I would provide Kate with support, um, the reverse wasn't really true, other than if someone would come in and, and want to hand a tax payment to someone, they could do that for Kate. She doesn't do my deposits, right. reconciliation. I, and I, th I think what we're trying to, I think what, what Kim was trying to say, you'd be a good backstop for Dan. Sure. If something happened, or maybe if, if you're out, like he could collect stuff, you know? So give both a little bit of flexibility. And I'd like to talk to have Dan participate in this conversation because the reality is is the town clerk chooses the deputy and the tax collector chooses their deputy. And which is what we had initially well, let's done. Let's make that the second conversation. Okay. Perfect. I'd rather I would off. like to have myself, you know, reviewed and, and um I'm so great at confession. Go <laughs> so going forward, so the so the new understanding is now I'm back to reporting to the select board. Correct. Well, we need to make a motion for that. Right. I mean, we don't have a town administrator now, but we should make the motion now, anyways. Okay. You guys have to. I'll make a motion that the tax collector um, be reporting to the select board. Um, I I second that. No, I'm favor. Aye. Thank you for that clarification. Um, the compensation. So, is this something that the board is looking at for the next budget? Okay. So, right now we're just we're putting together the proposed 2022 budget, which is what is yeah. on here. Uh, probably. Okay. So, um, basically, the treasurer is a line item for under tax collector, myself, the payroll taxes, the tax bill mailing, the audit. Um, I just would keep ask the board to keep in mind that it's an audit of all municipal, so basically the, the bookkeeper, myself, and the town clerk. So even though that's a, a budget item under myself, it's the whole town office. Um, you know, I always struggle with what to ask for. Uh, again, I'm kind of being put on the spot. I so, think, no, think about I, this. I prefer that you think about it and let's have the conversation. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. So for we that. can both. Okay. Because we don't have to, when, we don't need this for next um, week. The town budget is November 17th. Yeah. Oh, so we have some time then. Right. That, okay. That, that's my, that okay, my perfect. Point. Although, we, or, I don't know, because I'm going to be giving the budget committee partial budgets um, for the no, presentation. Yeah. I mean, uh, we, uh, we, we need to do it as soon as we can, but I, we don't have to do it tonight. I think we should talk about it. We should have a conversation. We should have a conversation with you. We should have a conversation with you and Dan. I will make myself oh, yeah, available yeah. to you. And we'll you know, figure it out. I can try to be flexible with my other yeah. job. And uh, we'll, okay. so you yeah. let me know what works for the, for you. Um, I know you will both work, so I can make myself available at night. Um, well, it needs to be a public meeting. Um, so I mean, we could schedule some time in our next hearing. I mean, our next meeting, a regular meeting. Which is the 12th, right? Well, it needs to be a public meeting too. So, Jack, you mentioned yeah. about talking to me individually. Is it just? Is it is that inappropriate? Well, if any decisions are going to be made, I'm not going to, going to make any decisions. Oh, yeah. I, 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 we can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Can I have a conversation? Yeah. Yes. As long as you're not making yeah. decisions. We I'm not. A one -on -one. I'm making. No, I just. I'm looking for information. Sure. To make decisions. Sure. Right. So I. So I'm in new. That case, I don't know anything. You know. Sure. I, in that case, um, so there won't be any decisions, really, information collecting. Absolutely. That's, that's all I want to do is, yeah. let's do a download. Yeah. Hey, like you did with the town administrator, and I'm happy to yeah. answer questions. Or, that's that's all I want. Since there may be concerned with town residents, I'll, I'll exclude myself from most of the stuff unless... Yeah. yeah, I don't think you should do that. Unless you guys... So I think we should have a conversation with Dan and Andrea, you and I. Yeah. Or you two, or Dan and Andrea, or you two, or do you want to talk to them alone? I, I don't care if you want to join us. The three of us could do that, and then let's do one with Dan and her afterwards. And when we talk about doing the uh, deputy. Yeah, I think it's really my focus is kind of getting us back to where we were 
when you know um, people were cross trained and mm. you know the people were working together. Mm. And it was a cohesive unit at one point, mm -hmm. and then we transitioned away from that. And it's right. it it would be nice to get back to that. COVID didn't help matters either. That's for sure. Right. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. No, I'm good. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Andrea. Okay. All right. So, um, so no decision on that yet. No decision on that. We'll get there. Though. So you know, the one thing I want to go right though is you know. Whatever you guys decide, I'm not really always go by the rep director if we think they have a good explanation that's worthwhile. And yeah, I, just have to, I just have to give Celia a lot of credit for, you know, trying to keep the rep going when so many people have bailed. So I just, yeah. I don't know, she's not here right now, maybe she'll see her recorded, but... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think you need to ponder it, like, seriously. I agree. And maybe some direction to her mm -hmm. about how she can approach it. I, yeah. I think she's been left hanging too much. You know, too many people have come and gone, and she's yeah. trying to pick up the pieces. So there's a new, um, this line item on 66 land use admin support, um, that was funded last year, but it's new, um, and, it, and it's proposed to be funded the same. What's this? Uh, um, the land use, well, um, what number is that? 66. 66. Um, although it's kind of confusing to me because it's proposed to be the same. But there's, if you look in the detail lines of uh, the data, thank you. It says, um, there's an increase for that position from like $12 to $16 an hour in the details of um, the spreadsheet. Hmm. Uh, planning is new. So, and I can show you about this. Um, so the planning, so it looks like. The 2020 rate <clears throat> is 12.24 an hour, um, and it's proposed to move to 16 dollars an hour. But the numbers um, in the proposed appropriation didn't change, so they're proposing the same number. So <clears throat> I have to find out. Um, yeah, I see that. Oh yeah, I see. It. Okay. So this that sixty nine seventeen must be at twelve dollars an hour. So that that number, the new number at sixteen, didn't go into this budget. I, I can sit down and do the math on it. Um, and what's that job? Um, so it's this, the planning board um, and zoning board secretary. Which I, it's kind of weird. That's a lot of hours. Um, what is the hour? I only meet once a month. What's the hours? It's a lot of work that she has. To do. Before the meeting, she has to look at for all the buyers and contact them. I'll do stuff at the registry. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure all the details, but I know it's a lot. So, in, in addition to the meeting, there's probably right. paperwork, administrative yeah. work that goes along yeah. with it. And all the mailings. There was a lot of. Uh, okay. A lot of mailings. Um, so for that, I would say. Um, it seems like the, the regular, the, the principal secretary rate is about $15 an hour. Um, I think we could have, sorry, I didn't have that. Can you do a very cheap, Um, I think, you know, to, to bring to line, um, we should at least consider, probably, oh, I mean, it's a big jump, but I don't know how they decided at $12.20. Um, like it's um, nine hours a month. Oh no, sorry, that's planning consultant. Um, 100 hours a year for planning and 36 hours a year for zoning. That's pretty small. That's really small amount. Only two and a half. So, so <coughs> it looks like the increase, if if that number that was there already is the act to date number, is. Okay, so it's about an $1,800 increase. Um, 
um, from last year to this year. So because of the salary change, that's at sixteen dollars an hour. But I have so to go every hour. year. Oh, a hundred hours a year, right? You said. Yeah, but the total like so it looks like Caroline did a total um, of eighty-seven seventy-six, which isn't reflected in there. I think that's last year's number. But I have to do the math on it. Okay. But just going through my head real quick, and not, I mean, if I'm missing something, hundred dollars, basically 130 hours for a year, four bucks an hour should be about 720 bucks for an annual increase, not 1800. I'm not really sure where she came up with 6917 because I don't see it in here. Okay. But I'll, I will try to figure that out. So yeah, I'll try I mean, to get some more yeah. information about that. Yeah, what was the original paper call of this? Um, what's that? The original paper was 12, right? Yeah, for some reason they started at 1224 an hour. Um, and so it might she, have been the rate three years ago, or two years ago, which didn't exchange drastically. Um, and then, so, so they're proposing um, move to 16. I think, you know what, we could at least consider keeping her in line with the other secretaries. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Well, I'll try to figure out the math on that. All right. Um, all right, so we'll keep going. And then so that's kind of open. And then that's... Uh, oh, um, so I highlighted um, sewer for town, water for town. Pretty significant increases there, nothing we can do. No, big rate, a big, big increase. It's because they changed to the uh, metering system. And mm -hmm. Is that what it is, the metering system? And, yeah, and what's going on. So it looks like the, for the fire station, um, and there's a note on that, it, it's a 2,600% increase. So they went basically from $500 a year to $14,000 a year. That's the meter in right? Um, it says budget for the second meter. Um, so, and I think that's for the vehicle wash, right? It's a yep. two-inch meter. Oh, two inch. Budget for the two inch meter. Oh. Yeah, it's a two inch meter. Okay. So that's. So the what meter. does that mean? Because they never had a meter before? That's, yeah, that's right. Because they didn't have a meter, right? Now they have the meter. That's why it's gone up so much. Because that's probably not controllable, right? I don't think so. And the rates have gone up also. Right. But like you said, that is out of our control. Um, so no, it does affect you overall. I mean, it affects about 600 residents, though, right? So, in the village. Oh, the metering? Yeah. Well, yeah. The co just the, up the mm -hmm. cost up, but the cost yeah. has gone up quite a bit. For mm. So, one of the things I highlighted I was a little concerned about is the electricity. Um, it had been budgeted last year at 12000 and they dropped it to 7000 although... Wait, people, I think. Oh, okay. LED, right. Okay. Um, all right, because before that it was like $10,000 a year. So, um, I don't know how they arrived at that draw, but. I don't know, seems probably so. I mean, did they, have, did they have history from like the I past few so. months? They looked at bills or something and, and it's dropped? Yeah, we and do have just, history. And then they probably. It seems significant though. Maybe it, it is that much. I mean, yeah. I mean well, that's what that's what they're trying to say, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're right. Oh, I am. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because they, that that was an estimate that the company gave how much they would save by going LED, correct? Mm -hmm. They want LED. Okay. So we'll leave that then. Cross our fingers. And then and um, going back to water and sewer, I know that Caroline did. Sent quite a few, two or three emails about metering and a bid. Is this number right? Because it seems like to be a lot. And they're like, yeah. So I don't have water in the sewer, but I think the bill's gone up like 100%, something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. I would think if we didn't have to pay for building permits, we wouldn't have to pay for water in the sewer either. But hmm. it all comes from the same place. Yeah. Um, so um, I asked Ed about the repairs to the transfer station one ninety three. He said um, they put that in the equipment fund. Um, and 
Okay. But he doesn't have an equipment fund. I don't think he has an equipment fund. I think. Does he mean equipment fund from like SIP? Is it, uh, is he no. Referring to that? It was um, actually his budget. Oh, there is an equipment fund. Um, and they have $2,000 proposed for that. Okay. All right. Well, that's fine. I think that's fine then, because it looks like they have equipment line for 2000 and then they had um, a separate transfer station. Um, I don't know why. So I know on the budget committee, like yep. the, um, the chair kind of led the meetings. Yeah, we, we, and, but the vice chair really did like kind of like, yeah. all the scheduling and yep. all that other stuff. And I kind of feel it's probably a similar position um, for the select board. And that's why I said, you know, I'm doing, you know, I don't mind doing the, the light work. Okay, so you guys get it first. Okay. You guys say aye. Um, so, I, so I'll remake the motion to nominate Paul Cass as the chair. Okay, mm -hmm. all in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. And since I'm nominated, I'm going to nominate you as vice chair if you take it. <coughs> And all in favor? Aye. Okay. And we'll give Jack all the work. I think he's just the uh, secretary. secretary. Yeah, he's just, well, yeah. I think yeah, it's like, a clerk. It's a clerk. A clerk, yeah. So I don't hey, I've never been a clerk, so this would be good. I don't know what a clerk does because I did look for a description when. Um, I only went to select board number. Okay. It was what? Like, it was, it, it used was, to be, for the clerk used to have to stamp the. Uh, well, I'm, I'm good at that. <laughs> I used to be like, stamp the water, the sewer plans, and things like that. Okay. They were in charge of the stamp. Okay. okay. Um, so, oh, so, uh, are you all set on the ex officio assembly? Yes. Paul Stormwater and planning. I'll be mm -hmm. recreation and highway, and Jack is sip and budget. But in the at, but temporary I'll assist Yes, you. I know. Okay. I got it. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, so we have some things to ponder for our next meeting. I don't, we have to think about, um, the last thing is, do we want to schedule another budget workshop mm -hmm. outside of our regular meeting? Yep, um, probably we do. One final yeah. one, I want to say one final yeah. one, but one more. Um, okay, so we got, um, so we, on Monday, uh, we have the public hearing. Um, uh, for, can we talk about that for a minute too? Yes. Yep. Give me a little, uh, I know I've, I've read the, the, the material around that. So are we just here to listen? Uh, uh -huh. Yep, to take a look from the public. Uh, we've had a couple public hearings on it. Um, you know, a decision was made, and we had another one to kind of change it to be very specific addresses. Um, and then after um, hearing at the Highway Safety Committee, um, basically, we want to put it back to the way it was because you, there was no safety issue. Right. So we made a proposal to reverse that last decision. And the public hearing is on that specifically on Monday. All right, so we've already put a proposal out there to reverse it. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Well, um, nice. yeah, I'm going to just make a comment on that too, and I'm going to make it at public's here. Um, one thing I really got out of one of the meetings is the people who were here. They brought up a few things about being part of the community and like, hey, working together. Like, they never had issues with like, hey, if someone's parking here, mm -hmm. instead of like calling the cops and stuff, it's just like they work everything out. And I, I just was enlightened by some of the people, the young gentleman's like, I believe them when he said, listen, I will not park over. Yeah. So that was kind of a, a, a big hand of why, you know, I think that. We didn't do it on purposes, but we really, we really like poked them. Okay. And it probably wasn't the best way to handle it. Yep. I mean, I, I, my personal opinion is we probably, we don't, and I think Ed Jansen said this to me a long time ago, we don't have to be involved with every battle. So um, I think the right thing is to just, it, it wasn't a safety issue. It didn't originate that way. Um, it was probably just, we should have Unification. This is how I originally took in. Yeah. So, we'll so Jack, basically, we're going to hear what they have to say. We're going to make a decision that night. Um, and then that hopefully will be behind us. And then we do have a quick meeting with the water and sewer. They're going to propose their, um, their projects for ARPA funds that night. Um, so that's um, next Monday. So, and then we have a regular meeting scheduled for the 12th. Do we want to, um, 
I mean, well, let me look at this schedule one more time. Um, I'm just trying to figure out because you have back I signed. All the stuff I signed, it's not just the copies. That are in this folder. Yeah, I need that copy. I'm just looking close up again. The, um, the, the budget committee meeting. Yes. So the next one is um, the next budget committee meeting for presentation is the 20th, no, sorry, the 27th. Okay. So I propose that we take um, the next Monday that isn't a regular meeting, which I think is the 18th, um, October 18th, that is not a regular meeting week, mm -hmm. and we use the 18th as the budget workshop, and hopefully have, have it all settled by then. Can I get a list of all our regular meetings? They're every two weeks. I'm stuck in. Yes. yes. The and, and the budget meetings and the yep. SIP meetings. What date did you say, Kim? Uh, October 18. That's a Monday? Mm hmm. Yep. Yes. <coughs> the 12th is a Tuesday. That's right. So on Wednesday, this doesn't really matter. I don't think it's even Wednesday, but uh, from like Wednesday to Wednesday to Monday, I'll be out of town. Which, that week? The, 20, the 20th, and I'll be back that Monday. I'll be back for the meeting. Okay. Unless somehow I'm delayed. Oh, that's fine. So that would wanna, be the 25th. So you want to do the 18th for a budget workshop? Yeah, I'm fine with the 18th. Okay. All right. And hopefully we'll have everything we need by then to, you know, put a final budget together. Yep. Okay. All right, good. Um, is there anything? Is there any? I guess we'll ask, is there any community input? I forgot this, so yes, there is there any community input? Is there any community input? No. Let's see if anybody, um, see. um, oh, we do have community input. Hang on. Um, let's see here. Oh, <laughs> Carrie Boyle. Oh, you're in trouble. <laughs> Carrie, um, do you have public input? Um, actually, I just have two questions. Um, for Camp Raleigh, do we know, and I'm sorry if this was already mentioned, but do we know how many are Rollinsford residents and how many are out of town? Do they still accept out of town people? Yes. I'm going to comment on that. Yes. Okay. Um, Carrie, there, I think there's a very s small amount that could be out of town. Um, okay. And their fee is, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Their fee is um, more than a Rollins resident. Doesn't okay. Just to offset a little bit more. Um, and I guess I'm going to just bring up a quick question too. I don't know if Rollins residents, they must have the ability possibly to go to other rec oh, sure. programs to pay the money too. So, mm -hmm. so that's that. Are you talking from yeah. grades like one up, or are you talking seventh on? Seventh and eighth. I guess. Um, well, oh, you're right because the the younger kids, the younger kids are not over there. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Never mind. No, that's okay. Um, so then, my other question was: Was C and J? How many buses were they talking about? Five. Five state owned. Okay, so it was just five state-owned buses that that fee was waived for, but not not all of their buses. No, I I don't want to give you the exact number because I don't know if I have the exact number, but there's something like no. about twenty that oh. I registered. So wait, so wait a minute, wait, wait, so how many buses were they talking about? Five. Five. Okay, so 
like maybe possibly 20 buses that these are waived for? No, 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 no. Five. no, only five. Oh, oh, okay. All right, thank you. That's yeah. all. Okay. You're welcome. I'm good. Okay. As, um, as far as the rec goes, any any child that lives in Rollinsford is, can join South Berwick programs. South Berwick. Oh, okay. okay. For after school programs and what have you, and I summer be programs. Yeah, they're allowed to join because they don't. They're allowed to join Summersworth, Dover, and yeah. South Berwick. I know my son did all through South Berwick. He did Little League in South Berwick, and he also did Babe Ruth. Thank you. And they also do soccer and everything else in South Berwick. Thanks, Nancy. Well, that might work to some degree because the kids are eventually going to go to that school. You know, right. and inclimates them, mm -hmm. you know, in mm -hmm. organization. That was always one of the things that, you know, I thought about the, the transition is simpler if they're all one school system, but that's a whole other story. So, that's not my job. Right. Uh, that's not our job. <laughs> so, right. for, for, and I'm going to say forever, because she was there when I was there and she didn't retire too long ago. Forever there was a physical ed teacher who basically just loved what she did. So she did the physical ed teacher job, but then she did a whole summer program that she took over, you know, she did oh. it in the summer. You mean that is wrong? Mr. Boyer. Yeah. Yes. Sir. I had her. I mean, I had her. And she was always, in, so, for the longest time. That's a had, long time ago, man. No, she just retired probably in like 99 or something like that. But for the longest, I don't know when she retired, but anything later than that. But for the longest time, that was all handled through her. Right. Um, and we, yeah. and the town didn't have any responsibility whatsoever. No. But. It was free then, too. For the yeah. summer program, the town paid for it. Yes, they did. They, they, they paid a stipend, but mm -hmm. they, the kids didn't pay. No, yeah, we kids paid. didn't pay because the town gave $20,000. Yes. Yeah. It was because a small back token. Back when I was a kid? Yeah. Well, up kid. until up until Camp Raleigh. Yeah, so up until... The town would pay the rec mm -hmm. program, the summer rec camp. Yeah, but I mean, it's not the sixty thousand they're looking for now. <laughs> no, no, that was that Sue and the town Karen. doesn't pay for. Yeah, that was Sue and Karen, but there was nobody staying for lunch. Uh, second, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thanks, Gary. All right. So you're being.